Hi again, it's Alicia Weinberg, and I am coming to you with day two of information about iodine, and I thought it really important today to just talk briefly about why we need iodine and why this is such an important discussion to have. So um, I just want to give you a list of um, the big hitters that absolutely rely on iodine. Okay, uh, this, is, this is all true, honest to goodness. Breast, brain, cerebral spinal fluid, the pancreas, salivary glands, the skin, stomach, thymus, thyroid, and the muscles. And this includes scar tissue and fibrosis and fibromyalgia. This is a huge, 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 huge amount of um, area that iodine is responsible for. And when we are deficient in it, all of these things kind of go to pot in different ways. This is not what I'm going to talk about today. I just want to let you know why it's so important that we have this discussion. And um, this is a very short video today because I'm sorry I don't have a lot of time. But what I wanted to do is debunk one thing and then introduce the superstar heroin um, gender neutral superhero for um, that's going to save us all from this dilemma. The first thing I want to say is that if you think you're getting iodine in your table salt, I want you to know you're not. Um, there are so many reasons why this isn't true. One, it's unstable in salt. And when you open the package of your Morton salt, um, within two months, almost all of the iodine is gone. Uh, just negligible amounts remain. But more importantly, in order for them to do that, they bleach the salt, which means that they take out all of the micronutrients. So you'd be better off pitching that, or better yet, saving it and uh, salting down the streets or whatever when it's icy out. Um, and instead going and getting some Himalayan or some Celtic sea salt that is full of unbelievable things. In one of the blog posts, a little bit later we'll be talking about all of the reasons why we should be eating um, salt because I think that's another sort of thing that's been misconstrued through um, media, I don't know, doctors, whoever. Anyway, this is why it's vigilante medicine. Um, but the, the other thing that I wanted to just start uh, talking about so you can start doing some research on your own is the hero of this story, our iodine story, the savior, whatever you want to call it, is seaweed. Um, and again, you should see all of the different articles that I have printed off of ryandrum.com. This is a man in the San Juans who is wildcrafting uh, seaweeds, and I had no idea how many different types there were. Uh, and all of their different properties. I am, I am so intrigued. I mean, super intrigued. Um, I recommend checking his site out right this moment, ryandrum.com. So um, there's more information coming on that, I assure you. There's more information on salt coming. And now I hope you understand why this is so important because from head to toe, iodine is necessary in the body. And as a last note, I want to just say before you start, um, you know, taking gobs and gobs and gobs of seaweed. And by the way, according to Ryan, eating three to five grams of most dried, unrinsed seaweeds provides um, the R RDA equivalent of 100 to 150 micrograms of um, iodine. So go seaweed, brown, unrinsed. Um, I want you to know you can take too much. And if you take too much, it's just as dangerous if you don't have enough. So. Um, there is, as with all things in life, balance, and I just really want to make sure that we are um, clear on that uh, from the get-go because this is not something to play around with um, without information, which is why I'm trying to take this slowly and giving you little <coughs> micro bits. So this is Alicia. I'm still fired up. I'm really excited to keep bringing you this information, and um, good health to you. Ah!